A day at the races. All over the Roman Empire, people flocked to see the races. A day at the races meant a day spent betting on teams, cheering and buying snacks from vendors. In an atmosphere charged with excitement, chariots creaked and horses stamped in the starting boxes. At the drop of a white cloth, the starting signal, the gates flew open and they were off in a cloud of dust, thundering around the spina, or central barrier. The spectators went wild, cheering on their chosen team. In the capital, the four teams were called the Blues, Greens, Reds, and Whites. Spectators. This mosaic shows people watching the races. Here, men and women could sit together, unlike at the gladiatorial and theatrical shows. Victor. The winning charioteer received a victor's palm and a purse of gold. Ben-Hur. The film Ben-Hur captured the excitement of a charioteer's life. Controlling four horses at full gallop was quite a task, especially at the turns. Chariot and Horse. Chariots called Begay were pulled by two horses. Quadrigay had four horses. This bronze model is of a biga. One of the horses is missing. Races consisted of up to 12 chariots running seven laps, a total of about eight kilometers or five miles. There were frequent crashes and deaths, but they were just added to the excitement of the race goers. Chariots were very light for maximum speed. Ram's head finial on top of chariot pole. Champion stallions were used for breeding during their racing years. One man and his horse. This charioteer from the Blues team wears a leather harness to protect him from a fall. Successful charioteers often became very famous, and although mostly slaves, they sometimes made enough money to buy their freedom. Bronze Pole End This chariot pole decoration shows a figure of a triton, or merman. Chariots were built for looks as well as speed. The triton blows a seashell trumpet. Reconstructed Racetrack the Circus Maximus in Rome seated up to 250,000 people. The chariots thundered around in an anti-clockwise direction. Seven laps later, the survivors crossed the finish line opposite the emperor's box. The theater. The Romans largely copied theater from Greece. Plays were first put as part of religious festivals and were later paid for by the wealthy to gain popularity. Tickets were free if you could get them. Roman audiences generally preferred comedies to tragedies. The stories involved kidnapped heiresses, foolish old men, and cunning slaves, and usually had a happy ending. The Romans also invented other types of theater, such as mime and pantomime. Roman pantomime involved an actor dancing and miming a story from Greek legend to musical accompaniment. A comic actor. The scheming slave was a common figure in Roman comedy. When his plans were found out, he often ended up taking refuge on the altar in a temple, like the bronze figure above. Mosaic Masks. Roman actors were always men. Women could only appear in mimes. They wore elaborate masks like these seen in the mosaic above. The masks told the audience what kind of character the actor was playing. Tragic face. On the left is a marble carving of a female tragic mask. Actual masks were probably made of stiffened linen. There were gaping holes for the eyes and mouth. A troop of players. This mosaic, now in Naples, Italy, shows a group of actors dancing and playing musical instruments, page 48. The piper wearing a white mask is playing a female character. Behind the scenes. This mosaic shows a group of Greek actors rehearsing a play. Two actors are practicing their dance steps while another is being helped into his costume. A musician plays the double pipes and masks lie ready to be put on. A Roman theater. Roman theaters were usually open to the sky. This one at Orange in France could hold 9,000 people. The wall behind the stage once had 76 decorative columns and many statues. It also had three doors through which the actors made their entrances. Three mimes. These terracotta figures shows a group of mimes performing a play. Roman mime was very different from modern mime because the actors spoke. It was also different from other Roman stage shows because it was often performed on rough wooden stages set up in the streets. The actors did not wear masks, and women played female roles. Mime had regular comic figures, such as Stupidus, the Fool. Dagger, figure holding a dagger. Lamp, figure holding a lamp. Unlike Roman actors, mimes did not wear masks. Bag of money, figure holding a bag of money. The classic symbol of theater, tragic and comic masks. The public baths. Few Roman houses had their own bathrooms. Most people went to large public baths. These were not just places to get clean. Men went to the baths to meet friends, play games, and exercise. Women had separate baths or went in the morning. Changing rooms with shelves for clothes led to rooms that got steadily hotter. The idea was to clean the pores of the skin by sweating. 
Soap was a foreign curiosity. Olive oil was used instead. Afterward, there were cold plunge baths to close the pores. Foundations. These foundations of a bathhouse were discovered in London, England in 1989. You can see the bottoms of the brick pillars that once supported the raised floor. Heating. Fire stoked by slaves outside the bath sent hot air under the floors and through hollow tiles in the walls to chimneys in the roof. The fires were also used to boil water in tanks and to heat pools, as the drawing on the left shows. Hot springs at bath. The Romans used the natural hot springs at Bath, England, as part of a medical center. Sick people came from all over the country to seek a cure by swimming in the waters. Ivory board game counters. The inscription above means bad luck. Ivory above, bone above right, and glass counters. A gate dice, rock crystal dice, metal dice shaped like squatting men. Games. People came to the baths to exercise and play in the yard, some perhaps training with weights, others playing ball games. These included catching games, which were played with colored balls of all sizes, including heavy medicine balls. The less energetic bought drinks and snacks from the vendors or sat in the shade playing board games or gambling with dice. Colored glass counters for a board game. Bath tools. This 19th century painting by Sir Lawrence Alma Tatama shows Roman women cleaning themselves with sponges and striggles, tools for scraping the oil and dirt from the skin. Toilet set. This bronze pocket toilet set from London includes useful tools for personal hygiene. Tweezers, nail cleaner, ear scoop. Handle for hanging cleaning implements from. Detachable lid of oil flask. All set for the baths. This set of utensils would leave you well equipped for a visit to the baths. The oil flask and the pair of struggles are attached to a carrying handle. This was like a large key ring allowing the tools to be easily removed. A cold splash. Dishes or pateray like the bronze example left were used for splashing cold water over the body to close the pores after the heat of the baths. Slot for hanging or attaching to a carrying handle above right. Base of patera has worn away over the centuries. Curved part of the struggle was used for scraping off dirt. Oil flask. This 2nd century CE oil flask from Britain is decorated with three African faces.